Hello, uh, dear students. Welcome to another lecture in clinical toxicology. In this video, we will be talking about animal poisoning. These are my learning objectives. First, we need to differentiate between two different uh, terms, venomous versus poisonous. Venomous are the animals or uh, creatures that produce venom uh, in specialized glands or cells um, that can be administered and uh, all derived to the enemy or uh, their prey. Uh, poisonous uh, would be like uh, the toxin is inside the tissues uh, and, and the effect of toxicity is uh, delivered through um, consumption uh, or ingestion of these tissues, toxic tissues. Examples for uh, venomous uh, creatures would be snakes and scorpions which would be the um, focus of our lecture today. Uh, poisonous will include examples such as fish, poisonous fish. Here is uh, a pic uh, some pictures of the poisonous versus the venomous uh, creatures uh, in, the, in the nature. Uh, please be aware not, uh, that not all of these creatures are of significant uh, hazard, hazard to human. We'll start by talking about snake bites. Speaking about uh, snakes, there are over 3,000 species of snakes uh, that are distributed all over the world, and uh, approximately 10% of these snakes are significantly hazardous to human. Um, in Egypt, the most famous types are uh, the viper, which lives in the desert, and the cobra, which lives in the Nile Valley. The venomous apparatus of snakes consists of venomous gland, which is analog of the parotid glands. They produce and store the venom. Venom canals that can connect the glands to the fangs and finally the palatine muscle that squeezes the glands and inject the venom. The fangs are specialized hollow teeth located anteriorly in the maxilla and uh, through these hollow teeth the venom is injected into the body of the victim. The severity of envenomation uh, depends on several factors. Um, the first thing is the species of the snake involved in the injury and its age and its size. Uh, secondly would be the number and depth of bites and the total quanti quantity of venom injected. Also, uh, the anatomical site of the bite is of great significance. Uh, venomous snake bites on the head are two to three times more uh, serious than uh, those on the extremities and trunks. Bites on the upper extremities carry uh, worse prognosis than those on the lower extremities. Uh, also, incidental penetration uh, of the fangs and injection of the venom directly into the blood vessels is usually catastrophic. Finally, uh, uh, factors related to the victim, such as the age and uh, their general state uh, of health. Um, victims of snake bite uh, may suffer from one or uh, all of the following uh, uh, manifestations. First would be local uh, in, in vomiting, uh, which, uh, which means it's confined, the injury confined to the part of the body that has been bitten. Second would be a systemic uh, envenomation, uh, which include uh, organs and tissues away from the part of the body that has been bitten. These effects may be uh, fatal or even uh, life-threatening, I mean. Uh, third is the effects of anxiety and frightening. Uh, this is caused by the experience of being bitten by a snake. These symptoms sometimes uh, might be misleading for the medical personnel. And lastly, the effect of first aid and pre-hospital -hosp uh, treatment that uh, may cause misleading clinical features. All these um, uh, listed manifestations uh, should be considered when managing a case of snake bite toxicity. If we move to the clinical presentation, we have local symptoms and signs. Uh, this is related to the signed site where the uh, snake bites the, the body. 
uh, we can sometimes see the fang marks or, or bruising or bleeding. Uh, also, uh, lymphangites, which is uh, raised red lines tracking up the bitten limb if it happens in one of the extremities. Uh, also, lymphadenites which, and lymph node enlargement. Uh, lastly, signs of inflammation in the form of um, pain, swelling, tenderness, and redness. And uh, finally, sometimes it progresses very hard or very rapid and leads to infection uh, and abscess formation, progressing to necrosis and gangrene. If we talk about the systemic manifestations, we have um, general uh, manifestations such as nausea, vomiting, malaise, uh, abdominal pain and weakness, sometimes alteration of the um, conscious level. Uh, we have also uh, neurotoxic manifestations in the form of um, next, uh, uh, it's caused by neurotoxin A and B affecting the central nervous system and uh, the musculoneuronal neuronal junctions. Uh, uh, the patient may experience paresthesia, uh, differences or abnormalities in the taste and smell, uh, toses, external uh, ophthalmophlegia because of the affection of the cranial nerves, uh, paralysis of the facial muscles because of affection of the facial nerve. Um, also, there might be nasal voice or aphonia, uh, regurgitation of the food through the nose due to paralysis of the vagus nerve. Uh, difficulty in swallowing and secretions and might progress into respiratory uh, muscle depression and generalized, uh, generalized flattened paralysis. If we speak about the cardiovascular manifestations, uh, there will be a cardiotoxin in the form of bradykinine, histamine, and serotonin, which might lead to a cardiovascular shock. Uh, one of the important manifestations of snake bite is the hematotoxicity, which affects the uh, coagulation mechanism of, in, the, in the system, leading to internal bleeding. So a bleeding might happen from um, external wound. If the patient has other external wounds, there will be manifestation of uh, increased bleeding, external bleeding, or spontaneous systematic bleeding in the form of uh, epistaxis, hemoptysis, hematemesis, rectal bleeding uh, or melina, hematuria, uh, and sometimes vaginal bleeding in females. You will feel, uh, you will see uh, skin um, under uh, subcutaneous manifestations of bleeding such as the particular hemorrhages, purpura, and ecchymosis. And sometimes it progresses into intracranial hemorrhage, uh, which is a life-threatening condition. Renal manifestation will include a lion pain, hematuria, hemoglobinuria, and um, uh, especially because of the uh, skeletal muscle breakdown that happens um, uh, due to uh, the, uh, the snake toxin, uh, this will lead to uh, myoglobinuria and this will follow by nephrotoxicity and renal failure. If we speak about management, First, if a, symptom, a patient is asymptomatic, then we need to follow up. And the follow up is very important because the manifestations might follow after a latent period. Um, symptomatic patients need to have the first aid measures, such as the patient needs to stay calm, immobilized and sedated because of the uh, frightening and anxiety. Specific measures in the form of intravenous drip of antivenom. In Egypt, it is polyvalent and it is, should be tested for sensitivity. Some patients might, uh, some patients might experience uh, hypersensitivity reactions uh, to this antivenom. Supporting measures will include uh, tetanus, uh, antitoxin, uh, intravenous fluids to guard against shock. Sometimes, if there is a coagulopathy, uh, blood transfusions and blood products might uh, be needed. Oxygen therapy in cases of respiratory muscle or uh, respiratory center affection, antibiotics to, to guard against infection, and uh, care of the wounds, and sometimes corticosteroids. Laboratory investigations one of the main investigations that need to be followed in patients with snake bites are the blood work and coagulation profile. 
for the fear uh, of DIC and coagulopathy. It should be done every four to six hours. Also, keratin phosphokinase to guard against uh, renal failure caused by uh, skeletal muscle breakdown. Uh, here is a graph or a brochure that is given uh, or it's available online for uh, snake bites, do and do not. One of the things that I would like you to um, pay attention for is do not apply the tourniquet uh, or constriction band to the site because that, this might lead to more um, necrosis, tissue necrosis and gangrene. Differential diagnosis for uh, snake bite is the DIC, including um, different causes of DIC, disseminated intervascular coagulopathy, or other causes of puncture wounds. Now, if we move to scorpion bite, now moving into scorpions, um, uh, scorpion sting uh, in envenomation is a life-threatening emergency in tropical and subtropical countries with a potential of severe and often fatal clinical manifestations, uh, especially among children. There are over uh, 2,000 subspecies of scorpions worldwide, and there are about 26 species of uh, scorpions in Egypt. Um, you're not supposed to uh, memorize any of the names of the creatures, uh, either for scorpions or um, snakes, but uh, just uh, for the sake of uh, your interest, you can um, Look the names up. Um, scorpions have three primary body parts: the cephalothorax, to which um, uh, to which are attached a pair of uh, pincers. Uh, uh, there is an abdomen with four pairs of legs, and a tail which is segmented and ends in a tilson with the in a tilson. Um, the tilson contains a stinging apparatus. Uh, also, it has uh, two venom glands which uh, lead via independent ducts to the stinger. Uh, speaking about the mechanism of toxicity, the late closure uh, of neuronal sodium channels leads to autonomic storm. Uh, it is like a sudden outpouring or rush of endogenous uh, catecholamines and acetylcholine into the circulation. Uh, it is also worth to mention that components of scorpion uh, venins uh, uh, divide into protein components and non-protein components. Uh, scorpion venins uh, are um, very irritating and highly uh, allergenic. allergenic. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, it is a mixture of protein components and non-protein components. If we speak about the protein components, they are mainly neurotoxin and uh, minimal uh, amount of them uh, act as enzymes. Uh, examples would be phospholipase A, uh, acetylcholine esterases, and hyaluronidase. Non-protein components include histamine, 5 hydroxy tryptamine, and serotonin. Speaking about the clinical presentations, um, first it gives like a mild tingling or a burning sensation at the site of the sting. Uh, it might progress into the rest of the extremities if it happens in one of the limbs, which is a very common uh, uh, site, anatomical site of stinging. Uh, sometimes there is no looking evidence of the sting uh, could be found. Uh, sometimes it's only an erythematous, erythematous lesion um, or a reddish coloration of a small a circle of, on the skin. Uh, the systematic symptoms uh, might take a, up to 24 hours to be developed. And um, the manifestations mainly is like initial parasympathetic excitation followed by massive release of catecholamines. So the, the initial parasympathetic excitation is responsible for the uh, uh, parasympathetic uh, uh, symptoms, including vomiting, sweating, lacrimation, uh, meiosis, uh, cold extremities, uh, hypersalivation, uh, bro uh, increased bronchial secretions into bronchorrhea, diarrhea, bradycardia, hypotension, and priapism. Priapism is a painful um, uh, erection of the penis. Uh, that is not caused by sexual arousing. Um, this stage is followed by massive release of catecholamines, and this will be manifested as restlessness, uh, restlessness, 
amidriasis, cardiac arrhythmias of all kinds, hypertension, hyperglycemia, uh, toxic myocarditis, uh, cardiac failure, uh, progressing into pulmonary edema and respiratory arrest. It is worth to mention that hypertensive crisis and pulmonary edema uh, is most likely the cause of death in these patients. Speaking about management, uh, it is first if the patient is asymptomatic, we have to follow up and follow up has to um, be at least for 12 hours because of the delayed onset of the manifestations. Um, symptomatic patients uh, should uh, receive the first aid measures in the form of uh, sedation and um, uh, uh, keeping the, pa the patient immobilized to prevent the, the, the passage of the venom into the rest of the body. Uh, specific measures will include injection of specific scorpion anti-serum. Uh, then it should be followed by supportive measures in the form of oxygen therapy, antibiotics, uh, intravenous fluids, uh, just to guard against shock and hypovolemia. Uh, when uh, choosing sedation and analgesic, we have to uh, avoid opioids or other uh, drugs that might cause uh, or add to the respiratory uh, dysfunction. Corticosteroids and calcium gluconate sometimes is received to relieve the muscle spasm. With this, we come into the end of this lecture. Uh, I thank you so much for listening and waiting for your questions. Good luck.